winter moth and that seemed to be our biggest problem right then but this new spotted wing drosophila has really been a pain in the neck. Who had spotted wing drosophila in their berries this year that you know of? Yeah okay and the other people you probably had and maybe didn't know about them. So this is a new, yeah I guess I won't worry about it being a little bit crooked on that screen there, it looks okay. Uh, so this is a, a new, it's a fruit fly, it looks pretty big there but it's a new fruit fly. And a lot of these talks, I have, a lot of the slides I have stolen from Rich Coles. And actually, I haven't even told him yet that I got these uh, pictures from him, but I will. I'm going to see him in a couple of weeks and I will tell him. But this is Rich Coles from the Connecticut Ag Experiment Station. He was talking to a group uh, at Phantom Farms in Cumberland last November. And I know Pam was there. And I'm in the <laughs> That's right. Yeah. That's right. Uh, you really it's my it's it's dad, right? Yeah. 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 Oh yeah, yeah right here, yeah. right? Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, Chris, Pam is there. Uh, Looking good, Pam. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so we're having Rich come again in a couple of weeks on November 16th. Uh, it's during the daytime, I believe that's a Friday, down at our uh, cranberry bog that we've got in Rhode Island. We don't have too many of those, unlike you guys here. Uh, so anyway, I have borrowed a lot from Rich Coles, and I always depend on Rich. Rich is a wonderful source of information. But the spider ring drosophila, this fruit fly, is originally from East Asia. So it's from China and Korea, Thailand and, and Japan. And uh, it has really spread throughout the world, almost throughout the world, in just a few years. Yes, it was in, Pat said, Pat gave most of my talk there, we, we, we <laughs> recapping what uh, Alan Eaton said, but that's okay. It's uh, always good to hear it again. So it has been in Hawaii since 1980, but it was really in 2008 that it got into the mainland and then spread throughout the country in a, a rem remarkably fast time. And so in 2010 it was found in the southern part of the United States, and then 2011 it just shot throughout the whole northeast, um, causing problems in its wake. So, and so in 2011, what happened is it really eliminated late season blueberries and uh, fall raspberries in particular, kind of wiped them out. And this year, I don't think we did a whole lot better. I hear a whole lot of people that just kind of ended their blueberry harvest very early, you know, by the, by the middle of August or even early August, they were pretty well done. It was an early season, but I think also the spotted wing just got out of control in a lot of places. So it's pretty sad. So what's so bad about this fruit fly is we have lots of fruit flies. We, we know about fruit flies, but this one, this female has this ovipositor that can saw into healthy fruit. And that's really what the problem is, because our regular fruit flies that we know and love are can get into overripe fruit or very damaged fruit. Well, the spotted wing drosophila gets into healthy fruit. And just as it's ripening, it doesn't need to be, it doesn't need to be totally ripe at all. It's attracted to darkening fruit. So the males have the spots on it, but the females don't. Um, but the females have that big ovipositor, which here it's, it's tucked in. And uh, it, when you're looking at them under the scope, you should, have you done this before? You just sort of I tap. I've seen it. Okay, I've seen you it. sort yeah. of tap on the abdomen with you know, forceps or something, mm -hmm. and that ovipositor goes boils. Out. And yeah. it's, it's important to do that. If you're going to be looking under a microscope, you really should need to know what the females look like. So again, that ovipositor is king. You know, very characteristic for the female. Um, where our regular fruit flies, the females do have ovipositors, and they are—they even have little teeth on them. But they aren't—they're not even a quarter of the size of these. This, this is really a whopper. Uh, for the males, we look for the spots on the wings, but the, um, not all the males. Most of the males will have wings, but soon, when they first emerge, they might be light light colored, and the spot hasn't developed yet. But they always have these black marks on the legs, but. I don't, I don't look for that. I just look for the spots on the wings. So the, the spider wing drosophila, so here's a raspberry and you can see there's a couple of males down here and, and a female here. The, the, the adults will live like two to nine weeks. So the adults are really pretty long lived for a, 
tiny little fly. It's surprising it could live that long. The females can start laying eggs within two days of emerging. And yeah, I heard you know, that uh, Pat said that Alan Eaton was saying that they lay 300 to 50 eggs. I've heard anywhere between 100 to 600 eggs per female, depending on the temperature and what host. Like raspberries are by raspberries and blackberries are by far the favorite fruit of, of the uh, spotted wing Drosophila. So they lay the eggs in the fruit. Um, here's a little life cycle. Let me see if I get this. I should just move this forward a little bit. Okay. Uh, so as she saws, she saws with her ovipositor into the fruit. And so here's an egg, and there's little there's little breathing tubes off the egg that will that will stick out of the fruit. They're very hard to see. Have, have you seen that, Pam? Or, uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, I, saw I saw them this year yeah. for the first time. They're hard. They're hard to see, but the eggs are there. Within a couple of days, they've hatched into larvae, better known as maggots, because they're they're flies. We call the immatures of flies maggots, but sounds much better to say larvae. Um, and they'll grow for a few days and then they'll pupate. And so this, well, I'll show you a picture a little bit. So they'll pupate, they'll form little cocoons and be cocoons for, what is it, four to 15 days, depending on the temperature. And then you'll have the, the adult flies emerging. But again, let me tell this is, a, I like this picture of the breathing tubes, the filaments that come off of the eggs. And, uh, and here's a little, Larva on a blueberry, and then here, here's the pupae. And well, I'll go to another picture to show a better picture of the pupae. But the well, anyway, this. so here, this is one I had taken. Actually, I, I sent this out. If if you want to be getting my emails about the spider wing drosophila, you can sign up because I don't. How many of you do receive my emails about spider wing drosophila? Yeah, I know that there's several <laughs> growers that do it. If you're interested, um, what I did this year is I. I I used to send out a weekly um, newsletter to tree fruit growers. Well, I had to totally abandon that this year, and all I did was spot wing drosophila, and, and I had other responsibilities I had to do as well. But um, and so I'm not sure what's going to happen in 2013. But I intend to keep people up to date with what's going on with spot wing drosophila. So if you're interested in getting on my email list, let me know. So this is a berry that was soft, and I squished it out, and you can see right here is one little maggot. Well, with raspberries, so with blueberries, we'll tend to get two to five, eight maggots per berry. Well, oops, sorry. Well, with raspberries, oh, they there's just lots and lots. And so if you pick raspberries and put them in a container and just leave them a couple of days, I'm sorry, I don't know if it's good or bad that we just had lunch. But uh, anyway, they really like raspberries. So here's, a, so here's, um, I, what I've been doing is collecting some of the berries and then I'll let the larvae develop and then the, the pupae will kind of, will often sort of stick right out of the berry and the pupae are very distinctive that they have these, these uh, spiracles they're called but they'll, they'll be very characteristic, they all stick out like this. Have you seen any of those Pam? Have you looked at any pupae? I, there... I didn't find any pupae, okay. I've only yeah. looked at the maggot and then, you know. Right. And, and so if you save them for some and so they strange will reason. within the fruit. Either in the fruit or the, like this is one that's crawled out. So they, like it seems like about half and half. Half of them will kind of crawl out and pupate. So they would presumably pupate on the ground. And the other ones will kind of usually be sticking out of the fruit. So, yeah. But yeah, I don't see that in the field very often. But I'll see that often. I'll collect berries. And actually I'll show you some pictures of how I collect berries. And then... Uh, I'll let them develop in the little containers. All right, so you may have seen this. Rich Coles has shown this picture before. This is this is his of uh, this beautiful looking. This is a day neutral strawberry, and by counting the little breathing tubes of the eggs, that that perfect looking fruit had about 500 eggs that had been laid into that strawberry. The the numbers are just pretty outrageous. The eggs don't seem to do a lot of damage, but within a couple of days, the eggs hatch, and those maggots, 500 maggots in there, you know, will make soup out of that strawberry in just a few days. So the hosts, there's as raspberries and blackberries are about their favorite, but they are um, they are a big blueberry problem. They're a big blueberry problem. Other commercial uh, commercial crops. For peaches and nectarines, they seem, at least once the fruit starts getting soft, they can be a problem in peaches and nectarines. Anybody grow stone fruits here? 
Anybody with peach trees? This is probably this is strictly a blueberry group, isn't it? That's no, I, I, have, I have grapes. How about you have grapes? grapes. So for mostly for grapes, they're not a problem. They seem there's a couple of varieties that are very thin skinned and they'll get some spotted wing drosophila attacking but not anything like the blueberries or the raspberries. So does it matter the color of the grape? I have you know the dark I go dark purple to all the way to the yeah, green so grapes. On it. Right. And supposedly the dark purple grapes are more attractive to them. And so and as things like a Merlot gets um, right, then it seems to be able to be attractive, that, that they can pierce it. But it does seem that the lighter colored fruit are, excuse me, the darker colored fruit are more attractive. But you know,